until Saturday. Chris, thank you for joining us this evening. Tell us what uh, it's been like inside that facility. It's been scary. It's been real scary. Um, unfortunately, we have people that were out there today with me that haven't been in that building the entire month. Um, they're afraid for their, their, their lives. They're afraid for their family lives. Um, and that was the reason of the whole entire movement. Um, just me being the voice and sticking up for those who don't have a voice. Um, I felt it was the right thing to do. Unfortunately, it cost me my job, but um, I don't want to work for a company that doesn't take care of their people. And the Amazon has dropped the ball on that. So it is what it is. Um, what I'm are, still going to continue to Chris, fight. What aren't they, Chris, what, Chris, what aren't they doing that you want them to be doing? All we asked for was a simple building closure and it to be professionally sanitized. You know, we had a confirmed case um, and people were afraid. And that's all we were asking for. Nothing more, nothing less. We would have returned to work. Um, they wouldn't give us that. And that's ridiculous to me. You know, we had a building uh, a week and a half ago in Queens, New York, had the same issue. I don't see what the discrepancy is with our building that they couldn't do the same for us. You know, there's people that's been there uh, since the building opened and we feel like we're not worth anything to the company. We feel like we're expendable. And it's sad to say that the, the company well, failed us. And, you know, that's all we really wanted was Chris, a building Chris, closure and to be sanitized. You said you were fired. When did that happen? Um, uh, Around 4.30 today in the afternoon. You know, they gave well, me a call. How did, how did that happen? They're claiming that I violated a quarantine policy, which um, I, I, I it's ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. I'm appalled by it because I don't know what gives them uh, medical expertise to know who's supposed to be quarantined and who's not. Um, they claim that I came in contact with somebody um, that was tested positive, but um, the person that I sent home, which was my colleague uh, who tested positive, I was only around her for maybe two to five minutes. And thank God I sent her home because the bosses that are still in the building, they're the ones that allowed her to come back to work. And she was a, a positive case. So if it wasn't for me actually returning to work on Tuesday and sending her home, she would have been there another 10 hour shift and exposed to uh, more people spreading the virus, possibly to more associates. So this was a targeted attack against me, you know, to silence me, to silence my movement. But was to this, a with, was this, do you believe this was an attack? Would you you believe that they were firing you because you were speaking out publicly, or do you Absolutely. believe that you Absolutely. had you been had you been had you been told not to come to to work? No, absolutely not. Uh, what what happened was, I've been coming to work off the clock the entire week, the entire week. Um, off she the tested clock. By, off the clock. Off the clock. I wasn't paid. I wasn't paid. They're saying that I was paid. I haven't been why? paid yet. Um, why were you like coming, said, why coming, were you to, coming work to work off, off the, the clock. clock? I was coming to work off the clock to uh, to be that bridge from my associates to management. Um, I went there every day of the week to inform my people that they didn't do, um, that somebody tested positive that they directly came in contact with. So I brought my people into the general man manager's office every single morning to voice their concern and try to get the building closed and sanitized. I was just being a peaceful advocate. Wait, just, I was, yeah, we know, we rallied look, in the club. Uh, let, 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 let me ask you a question about just being in the facility. And so many of us who are, are Amazon customers, by the way, I want to just thank everybody out there who's on the front line uh, working, because I, I, don't, I don't think there, there's enough appreciation for, for what everybody is doing, especially in these, these times. Are you given gloves, masks, any other kinds of materials that would make people... Uh, feel protected? Is, is that available to people? What, what is it, when you walk into the facility, what, what happens, for example? Social distancing, well, how does that work in, in, in a facility like this that's moving, moving packages rapidly, I imagine? It doesn't work, and that's the problem. It doesn't work. Number one, that temperature taking thing, um, that just was implemented yesterday. Um, and just to piggyback off of that, the, the two cases that I've known uh, personally, they've never even had a fever. So for them to implement that, it's just a waste of time. It's, it's another reactive, um, something that they're trying to say they're taking safety precaution on. It's too late for that, you know. 
Um, as far as the gloves and the PPE, you know, just think about it. Um, people in the medical field right now don't even have gloves and masks. What makes you think the retail company do? I don't know why they keep telling the press that we do and they're providing that because that is entirely not true. Um, the gloves that we have are not latex. They're cotton gloves with grip. These are gloves that's meant for picking up boxes. They're not gloves that meant for protecting us from a virus. Um, the mask, the mask, we ran out of mask weeks ago. Um, and it, it's sad. We're we not ran getting out of masks mask weeks ago. My... So you... Yeah, I had Have to use my scarf been today. Doing anything? You know, I... mm -hmm. We're not providing with anything. We, so... we are using scarves. Um, we're recycling masks. Um, I've seen people put garbage bags over themselves. It's ridiculous. And we don't have cleaning supplies like that. We have a third-party company that cleans the building, but they're human beings as well. They're scared. Half of them don't even show up to work. You know, they don't. Amazon doesn't control that. They don't know how many people um supposed to come in to work. They may have a number, but if them people don't decide to come into work because they're a temp agency, they don't know that. They can't replace them people right there on the spot. You know, they may expect 25 of them to show up, but maybe only 12 show up. And they'll have 12 people cleaning a 900,000 square feet building. That's not clean. That's not sanitizing. That's not safe. So they need to, you know, you know last tell week we heard that Amazon, you know, last week we heard that Amazon w was raising overtime wages. Uh, uh, has that increased people's interest in wanting to work? Is there of less course. interest? I mean, what, just, just take us inside the psyche, though, of the people who are, who are there. Are people saying, I want to be here and do this now? Or are they saying, I really don't want to be here? What's the, what's, what's the mood? That's the problem with, um, with, uh, that I don't like about Amazon sometimes. They already pay good. You know, This is the highest paid building in the network, Staten Island. The highest paid. People that never had a job come what do, in. What do you get paid an hour, Chris? Me? Um, I get paid about $25 an hour. Um, people that get hired... They get paid twenty dollars an hour. Um, so you think about it, you know, plus two dollars now, and plus the double time. These associates are bringing home almost six thousand dollars a month. So it's like blood money, you know. Come there, sick as a dog, you know. Work your fifty hours a week uh, for an entire month, four weeks in a month. You bring home almost six thousand, a little more, a little less. Me, in my case, I bring home almost eight to ten thousand if I do overtime. It, it's it's not worth it. It's still not worth your life. It's not worth the risk. Um, people will sacrifice their health for the money. And you, and and that's what I was say. you believe that people are going to, you think people are going to work for the money, knowing that they're sick and possibly positive. Absolutely. Absolutely. I work with these people hand in hand. I, I tell them the risk and they told me, you know, I have bills to pay. Um, I have kids at home. I have no other choice, but I'm supporting you. And these are the things, this is the reason why I'm the voice, because, you know, it's not about the money to me. This is about um, human life. This is about life or death. This virus doesn't have, um, it doesn't have no remorse. Um, like we said, it could be, you could be totally healthy one day and then it could hit you like a ton of bricks. I've seen it. I've seen people dizzy. I've seen people vomiting. I've seen people fatigue. The person I sent home, her eyes were bloodshot red. They were in puffy. the factory. You, I mean, I'm sorry, in the warehouse. You're seeing people vomiting Absolutely. in the warehouse. Absolutely. 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 And they'll they'll clean it up and they'll put somebody right on that same station, that same exact workstation. And that is insane. I couldn't I couldn't take it. I I couldn't take it no more. So, like I said, this company um, like I said, these spokespeople that that speaking on our behalf of the people, these uh, executives, these VPs, these regionals, even Jeff Bezos himself, they need to be held accountable. Like I said, they targeted me to silence me. They fired me for speaking up today. Um, you know, and I don't want to work for a company that don't care about people. You know, that tells you this is a prime example. I'm a prime example of why they don't care about people. I've been with the company five years. I opened up three major buildings, um, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Um, I've always been a loyal uh, employee, a good employee, a good supervisor, a good manager. The people love me, and they supported me today. Um, and, and it's sad. It's a shame on them. a shame on Amazon today. Um, and, uh, you know, they don't care about people. How can you terminate somebody in a pandemic?
what am I supposed to do right now? You know, I have I have three kids I have to take care of. Um, they don't care. And that's sad to say that, you know, I haven't seen my kids in over a month and a half. And now I just lost my job because I'm speaking up for people that don't have a voice. Some of these people that was out there today, Chris, they have underlying conditions. They have lupus. They have right. asthma. They have bronchitis. They had to stay home the entire month. These people should be paid, period. There's no there's Chris, no way around it. Amazon I'll, should be ashamed of themselves. Right. And I'm speaking up, Chris, and I'm I still wanna, willing I to thank you. Fight. No problem. I, I want to thank, you, thank you for joining us uh, this evening and, and, and telling your story. Um, and uh, we should note uh, that we did reach out to Amazon uh, and that we did uh, uh, talk about that statement that they said that they have uh, been continuing to clean and sanitize and, and putting new measures in place, uh, as we said, they say, as they said, uh, tripling down on deep cleaning in Staten Island. We are now temperature checking everyone entering the facility. Chris uh, raising some questions about that. But nonetheless, uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's one view uh, from the ground. Uh, we're going to move on and talk about uh, the world of groceries. Similar, similar area, though. Bill Simon was the CEO of Walmart uh, from 2010 through 2014. Bill, uh, big question this evening. Are grocery and delivery workers being paid enough to deal with what they're dealing with, given some of the stories that we just heard from Chris Small right before you came on? Well, working in the grocery industry is tough. It's always been tough, and it's particularly difficult right now. And those people deserve as much money as they can get and a raise and probably a medal. Uh, they're going to keep us going. So uh, we need to do what we can do to support them. Um, in, in terms, though, of, of pay, you know, you, you hear Chris talk about uh, some of these people getting uh, big, uh, big overtime payments and other things to incentivize them to come to work, uh, which, which is a, a very good thing. But he is, he's also making the argument that some of that money is incentivizing people who are sick to come to work. It's a difficult situation. And, uh, you know, people on the ground and managers on the ground need to be cognizant of what's happening and monitor their people regularly. It, you know, I, I sat there in, in amazement and listened to Chris and the stories that he tells. I mean, Amazon's been having difficulties with their workforce for some time now, and it sounds like some of those issues uh, were, were pre-existing the, the, the current uh, crisis. Um, but it's hard to, to, you know, to determine from what he said whether that was isolated to a specific location or a specific beef that's going on with management at that location. But in general, managers, um, physical managers at the locations are applying as much caution and as much precaution as they possibly can in a very difficult and dangerous situation. And, and, right. and for the most part, they need to be commended for it. When you start to think about how um, the world of groceries and retail is going to work in the future, especially at big facilities like this, um, and there's so many... Uh, business people who are watching this right now, what are they going to have to do? Do you believe that everybody's going to end up doing temperature checking? Everybody's going to be providing latex gloves. Everybody's going to be providing masks. Um, I know so, so much of those materials may not be available right now, but I mean, do you believe that three, four weeks from now, that is going to become the norm? I think people are going to do what they think they need to do to be as safe as they possibly can and still provide what is a vital and a needed service for the communities that they're in. And I don't know that there's any homogeneous answer um, that, that can be applied to every location, everywhere, and every person. And it's all about making sure that people are comfortable and they're as safe as they can possibly be. So yeah, I think you'll start to see more and more masks and more and more sanitizing uh, equipment as, if it, as soon as it becomes available. Um, and that'll be you know for a period until we're through this crisis.